So this is a video tutorial on how to diagram syllogisms using Venn diagrams to evaluate the syllogisms. If you look at this Venn diagram here, you can see I numbered the various parts of the uh, Venn, the various sections of the three circles. And that's just for teaching and learning purposes. You don't actually have to put the numbers in there. So if you look at the numbers, 1 refers to things that are M but not S or P. 2 refers to things that are M and S, because they overlap, but not P. 3 refers to things that are M, S, and P, and then so on, right? And then you could also put a number 8 outside of the three circles, which refers to everything that is not M, S, or P. That is the rest of the universe. So uh, let's jump into doing some syllogisms here. And the first syllogism, um, I'm going to type up in the corner. And uh, let's use an EAE. So we have no P, R, M. And then we have all S, R, M. And then we have no S, R, P. Just to review the other video, remember this is an EAE -E proposition. The mood is figure 2. So EAE2, -E you could just look it up and see if it's valid, right? But we want to use Venn diagrams to confirm it, and uh, it's an important conceptual skill. So uh, the first step in, in doing Venns is, to, of course, to draw the three circles and then to diagram the two premises. And one of the most um, useful rules is to diagram the universal premise first, that is to diagram the A or E premise first. And both of these are universal, so we can start with either one. So let's start with the first premise, the major premise, and it says no P or M. Okay, so what that means is that nothing inside the P circle is inside the M circle. No P or M means nothing is inside the P is inside the M right here. So nothing's in 3 or 4. So it's a universal, and one of the rules is when it's a universal, um, you know, it has the word no or all, you always shade in. You always shade in for universals. You don't put X's in. Okay. All right. So we've diagrammed the first premise. Let's go to the second premise now. All S or M. So everything inside the S circle is inside the M circle. So all S's are in that little two section. Now it says all, right? And remember you always shade for all or no uh, premises for universals. So um, all S or N means no S's are non-M's. So we'll shade in everything um, that is an S but not an M. And there we go. So we've diagrammed the second premise, which is, again, all S R M. Okay. And now um, now that we diagrammed the two premises, the last step is to stop and say, okay, is the conclusion diagrammed? Um, if it is, then it's a valid argument. If it isn't, then it's invalid. So in other words, we're not going to draw anything on here for the conclusion. We're just looking to see if the premises have diagrammed the conclusion because in a valid deductive argument if the premises are true the conclusion must be true so if we diagram the premises the conclusion must be diagrammed if it's valid so let's look at this it says no SRP and uh, yes this shows that right so there's nothing inside the S circle that's inside the P circle 3 and 6 are uh, filled in so the conclusion is diagrammed therefore this argument is valid and there we go. We've tested our first syllogism using a Venn diagram. Um, let's try another one. <laughs> okay. And um, let me pull up paint. Okay. Okay. So again, you don't have to number the circles, but on a test, I might ask you, you know, should I shade in one and four or two and three? Or, and, and that's how we can make a multiple chest, uh, choice test out of this. Okay, so let's do uh, the next argument, and this one's, um, well, let me see what we have here, uh, no P, and then, okay, yeah, let's do this one. This one has a particular premise in it, so we have some P, R, M, that's an I proposition, and then all M, R, S, and then some S, R, P, okay? So what we have here is I, A, I, and then the middle term distribution figure here, not distribution, but figure, is 4. So we have IAI4, right? Um, okay, so remember the first step is to draw your circles and diagram the premises and start with the universal premise first. That is the all or no premise first. So we have, we want to start with all M or S. And the reason that rule's in place is to help you. Because if we started with some P or M, 
okay let's say we started with this particular premise first then I wouldn't know whether to put the X here in the 4 or the 3 because you can only put one X in for each uh, particular premise so I'm not sure do I put the X in the 4 or the 3 okay um, but if you diagram the universal premise first then it might help us because maybe the universal shades in 3 or 4 so it's helpful to always shade in the universal um, uh, premise first so Remember, you shade for the all or no. So all M or S, all the M's are inside the S circle. So all the M's are in 2 or 3, which means we will shade in this area. Remember, shading means there's nothing in the area shaded. So if we say all M or S, then what we're saying is no M's are non-S. And that goes back to the aversion, conversion, and so on. Uh, contraposition. Okay, so we've diagrammed the first premise. Now let's do the particular premise. And whenever you see the word sum, you're going to put a little x in there. So we have sum p or m. So sum p or m. So it's going to go in the 3 circle. And you might ask, well, why can't we put it in the 4? And that's because it's shaded in. You cannot, uh, a simple rule here is you cannot put an x in the shaded area because the shaded area says there's no nothing there, right? So we put an X there, and we've diagrammed the two premises. So now that we've diagrammed the two premises, we just look at it and say, is the conclusion diagrammed? Right? Remember, you don't put anything down for the conclusion in the VIN. You just see if the premises absolutely prove it. And in this case, it says some SRP, and look, there's an X right here, some SRP. And so, yes, this is valid because the conclusion is diagrammed. If the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. So this is a valid deductive argument. And some of you might have trouble seeing that. So maybe in your own mind you want to go like this. You don't want to do this necessarily as part of your answer, but in your own mind you think of the conclusion diagram. And that means there would either be an X right here in the 3 or an X in the 6. right? and then you compare it to the actual diagram and there it is, it's in the three, so we know it's valid. Okay. So it might help some of you to uh, draw the conclusion first um, and then do the actual work of diagramming the premises, but remember the conclusion drawing won't be part of your answer. Okay, let's do another one, take it to uh, another level here. Um, let's make this a little larger and Okay, so the next one a lot of people have trouble with is when there's two particular premises, or, or actually when you have to draw a premise on the line. Let's do one of those. Okay, so this syllogism will be some M R P, it's the major premise, and then all S R M is the minor, and then some S R P is the conclusion. Notice that's an I A I 1 uh, syllogism. Okay. So remember the rules. You want to start with the all or no, the universal. So all S are M. What that means is all the S's are inside the M circle. So there's no S's outside the M circle. So we want to shade in uh, 5 and 6. All the S's outside the M circle. Okay. All right, now notice the, si the first premise, the particular premise here, says some MRP. Okay. So we look at the diagram, and what that means, again, is some M is inside the, the P circle. So, But I can't tell whether to put the X in the 4 or the 3, because for each particular premise, you can only put one X, because the X the sum means at least one. So some M or P could go in 4 or 3. But if I put it in 4, I'm not really representing it, uh, because it could be in 3. So I have to put it on the line. It's an ambiguous sort of deal. Okay. Okay, so I've diagrammed the two premises. Because it's on the line, what that means is it could be in four or three. Now we ask, is the conclusion diagram some SRP? And the answer is no. If the conclusion were diagrammed, in your mind you might think of this, right? Um, we have our three circles, and some SRP, I guess the X would be here or here. Right? And we don't see that in here because what we see is that the premises could be true, 
but the x could be over in 4, because it's on the line, and therefore the conclusion would be false. Therefore, this is an invalid argument. Okay. You don't have the x in 3, so you haven't diagrammed the conclusion by diagramming the premises. Okay, let's do one with um, uh, two particular premises. To, um, a lot of people get intimidated by that type of uh, syllogism. All right, so on this one, it'll be, let's see here, yeah, some i or some MRP. Okay, let me put in the uh, figures first. Sometimes drawing the circles is hard. Um, get it right so we have um, some M R P some S R M and some S R P so we don't have any universal premises here we don't have any all or no so let's start with the sum sum m r p so sum m is inside the p circle that could be three or four it doesn't tell us which so it goes on the line okay so let me uh, select this and we'll put it right on the line sum m r p and then sum s r n there's some s that's inside the m circle again based on that premise we're not sure if it's in two or three it's ambiguous so the x goes on the line I've diagrammed the two premises. I now look and say, does this diagram show that some SRP? If it did show that some SRP, the X would be here on the 3 or here on the 6. It doesn't show that. So when I diagram the premises, the conclusion is not diagrammed. Therefore, this argument is invalid. And if you want to confirm it, you can look at the mood, right? Um, I, 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 and the figure, and so on, and look it up, but it's invalid. Okay. And, um, Again, it might help you to draw the conclusion in your mind, right? So if the conclusion were diagrammed, right, the S would be in the 2 or the 3, some S or P. But since it's on the line, I'm sorry, not the 2. Oh, yeah. Um, it would be in the 3 or the 6. So some S or P would be in the 3 or the 6. So I'm going to erase that little um, two-part. And when you look over on the left, it's not there. Okay, so um, it's invalid. Okay, um, let me see what else I have here. Um, okay, I guess we could uh, do real quick. Let's see if we have time. Um, if you are just given a problem like this. I can show you real quick. Um, if you, if you're just given uh, say A A A one, and and you're told to uh, you know reconstruct it um, and draw a VIN for it. Oops, I messed up there. Let's put a uh, one there. Okay, A A A one. What you got to do is you got to remember what the uh, mood and figures are. Okay, and so when you go back to the moods and figures, you're going to remember that um, when you have A statements, that's all SRP. So you're going to figure out that all MRP, all SRM, and all SRP. Now, how did I figure that out? Well, I know the conclusion is A proposition, so it has to be all SRP. The um, S is the minor term and P is the major term, subject and predicate. And then I know that the the uh, premise with the predicate is always listed first. That's the major premise, and that's an A proposition. And I know that when the figure is 1, the middle term is first in the first premise. So I know it must be all MRP. And then it's AA1, so the middle term will be second in the second premise. And so I know the subject, the minor term is there, so all SRM. Um, so you can reconstruct the syllogism just from the uh, mood and figure, and then you just diagram this. Okay? I'm not going to test you on that, but that's how you do it. <laughs> okay. Thanks.